Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. It is so good to be with you all this morning on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. And already I see on the chat stream uh, folks that are coming in. Uh, Cindy, so good to see you. Bob Blazewitz, Bob Morton, so good to see you. Dwayne, first on today, so good to see you, Dwayne. Gus, I heard you got on today. It's so good to see you, Gus, and all of you that are on already this morning. Happy Easter to you. Uh, please pass the peace around on the chat stream. Send virtual hugs and hellos and hearts and tell people, hey, we love you. Happy Easter if you haven't already. Now, let me start with some announcements. Uh, first of all, you can find our weekly bulletin. Uh, on our website, go to delranumc.org and you tap click or tap uh, ent or click enter and join us for Sunday worship and you'll be able to find uh, the different uh, bulletins. You'll see the date of service in the bulletin below that. Uh, the bulletin has all the announcements. I'm only going to highlight a few today. Uh, the second announcement is if you haven't already, I hope you can download the Zoom Cloud Meetings app on your device. Uh, we've had some great times of meeting virtually online. We've met... Um, several times already this past week we met every morning for devotion and it was a great time of reflection other times we laugh together it's so good to see people encouraging one another and praying together that's been so good we'll be doing coffee with the pastor again this Wednesday 9:30 a.m. Uh, and 7:30 p.m. so I hope you can join us please watch for the zoom meeting links in your email and then second, we're going to do a uh, Sunday School Kids story time again this Tuesday at 5 p.m. this week. I hope your children can join us then. Uh, if you need the link for that, please email the office and we'll send you that link. Uh, next, I want to thank you all for giving this past week. You know, we're not meeting in person, but we still have needs to meet. And it has been so good to hear uh, that uh, you all are giving and I am so grateful for you. I'm so proud and honored to be your pastor. Many of you are mailing in your offerings. Others of you are giving online and, and so today, especially on Easter Sunday, uh, I want to invite you to give. I want to invite you to consider the praise of God on this Easter Sunday and give as your heart uh, uh, longs to give and I want you to know that your giving helps us to care for our church and for the community beyond our church so praise God for you uh, next or finally one of the things that we value at our church is serving the community with the love of Jesus Christ even during the stay at home time there are things that you can do uh, the first thing you can do is to help replenish our food pantry. Already over in the past couple weeks, we've gotten requests. And if you can help replenish the items you see on your screen, there's rice, juice, instant potatoes, mac and cheese, powdered milk, tuna, canned vegetables. Please contact Keith and Donita and they will come to you. You do not need to leave your house uh, and they will make sure that the people are, who, who need them get them. Uh, the second thing you can do is to help make face masks. United Methodist Community Senior Homes operates nine communities around New Jersey, and they're still in need of a few hundred masks for their staff and for their residents. So if you're good at that kind of thing, please let me know. You can message me on Facebook uh, through the church, web page, uh, the church Facebook page if you'd like. You can email me or text me and let me know that, uh, hey, you want to make face masks. Uh, and we will arrange for pickup from your house. Again, you do not need to leave your house. We'll arrange for pickup and make sure the face masks uh, get to those who are most in need and who are most vulnerable. All right. Um, I invite you now to settle in and to put away all distractions. Uh, sit together with your family and stay engaged. And don't just watch what's going on, but worship God in this time. Uh, you may not be in the sanctuary at church, but God has promised His presence wherever you are. So make the time that you're in right now and the place that you're in right now a sacred time and a sacred place. Gather your family around you and uh, take a deep breath and give your heart and your mind to God in worship. We gather as a community, not in person, but virtually to nurture our faith and to express it. So let's begin the worship of God as we pray this prayer together. You'll see it on your screen. Resurrected Christ, overwhelm our hearts with the good news of this day. The empty tomb reminds us of your power over sin and death and frees us to live fully forgiven, redeemed, and loved. 
by the strength of your spirit, let our alleluias fill us with such joy that we are transformed to live as your Easter people. We pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to sing with me uh, as we sing songs of praise and of worship to God today. So it's about our, my, uh, our Redeemer living. So let's join together in this song as well.
my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, oh, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, oh, my Church, would you take a moment to tell yourself today, my Redeemer lives. All praise and glory be to God. Shame has been taken away. Sin has been taken away. Even death has been taken away. We have the promise of forgiveness and new life and eternal life because Jesus has rose from the dead. Take a moment to tell yourself that, remind yourself that, and praise God because of that. Oh, God, we honor you. We praise you. We thank you so much for this day that you've given, every day that you give. Your mercies are new today. Again, you remind us you have conquered over sin and evil and death. We thank you for this day that you've given to us. We praise you, our Redeemer. You live and you live forever. In Jesus' name. Well, now it's time for the children's sermon. Uh, and if you have children nearby, please direct their attention to the screen. Uh, kids, if you're watching, I hope you're doing well. Happy Easter to you today. You know, it was so good to see you this past Tuesday on Zoom. Uh, we haven't seen each other in a while, and just seeing each other was so special, and it was so good. I hear that you were all excited about it and enjoyed it. Uh, and we had a great time. I hope you can join us again this Tuesday at 5 p.m. this time on Zoom for another Kids Story Hour. Uh, but today, do you know what today is? Today is Easter Sunday. And Easter Sunday is special. We celebrate Jesus because many years ago, Jesus rose from the dead. The Friday before, he died on the cross for our sins. Uh, but then the Sunday after, he rose from the dead. The tomb was empty, like in this picture right, that uh, you see there, the women went to visit and the angels told them, the tomb is empty, there's no one here, he's not here, he's risen. So I want to show you today uh, a little bit of an illustration uh, as to what happened, what happened with Jesus and what happened with us. So please pay attention and focus on me. One thing you might remember doing every Easter is the Easter egg hunt. Do you see Easter eggs anywhere around me? Right? You might see some behind me. You see all of these Easter eggs. There's a basket with Easter eggs over here. There's Easter eggs with the flowers that you see behind me. And you might remember the Easter egg hunt. Um, uh, and here's one. Here's an Easter egg. Right? Remember, you go hunting for Easter eggs, and there's stuff in them usually. Uh, there's stuff inside. So what happened with Jesus is kind of like this. Let me show you. Pretend that this is you. This hand, my hand right here, this is you. God loves you, okay? And imagine this Easter egg is your heart. Now, every time we do something bad or wrong, and we talked about this this past Tuesday, right? You gave me examples. Every time we do something bad or wrong, it's like we put these things, like you lie, you disobey your parents, you steal, you cheat. All these different things that you do fills your heart like this, right? And it's not just you, it's me too, and it's all of us. We're all like this. Our hearts get full of this sin, okay? And sin breaks our friendship with God just like it breaks our friendship with others, right? If you've lied to your parents or maybe you lied to your brothers and sisters, you know there's something weird going on there. You're not as close as you were. Maybe you fought with them or argued with them and you said some not so nice things. So sin breaks relationships. Sin breaks friendships and sin breaks our friendship with God. Well, God loves you, okay? And he hates your sin. So what does he do? Well, let's pretend this is Jesus, okay? Jesus has no sin. But what Jesus did was he took our sin just like it was his. Just as if he's the one he did, who did it. He put our wrong on himself. And he died on the cross so that you and I, we could be forgiven of our sins. Right? We have no sins. We are forgiven. 
But that's not all that happened. That's what happened Good Friday. Well, you know, what happened was that Jesus was buried on the, in the tomb, and on the first day, he was still in the tomb, right? And on the second day, he was still in the tomb. But on the third day, he was not in the tomb. The tomb was empty. Right now, if you're surprised by that little egg trick I just did, imagine how surprised Jesus and his disciples were, or his disciples were rather, when they found that Jesus is not in the tomb, but he is risen. Right? They were so surprised, they were so overjoyed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Now, Jesus rose from the dead. He died for our sins, but he came back. That means our sins have no power, and Jesus has all the power. Your sins and my sins can be forgiven, and because Jesus is alive, we can live in close friendship with him forever. Jesus told his disciples he's going to be with them always, so he's always with you. Let's look at a Bible verse that I want to share with you today. You can read it wherever you are and read it out loud with me, okay? It comes from Matthew chapter 28, verse 6, and it says this. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. Let's read it again. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. So wherever you are and wherever you go, well, you're not going to go too many places, but you're going to be home. Remember, Jesus is alive, and he is with you. Even during this coronavirus time, he's risen from the dead. Amen? All right, amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, I pray for every child who is hearing the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that they would remember the tomb is empty. The cross is empty. Jesus has risen from the dead. And so we are forgiven, and not only are we forgiven, God, I pray that every child would know that you are with them, you love them, you strengthen them, you give them the peace that they need. I pray, God, that you would help us, every child, to remember Jesus risen from the dead. We pray all these things in the name of the one who rose from the dead. Amen. All right, amen. Now we're going to read the scriptures for the adults. This comes from Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 36. And it says this. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, 
and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some years ago, I had the opportunity to go on a mission trip to the other side of the world. And I was so excited because uh, I'd never been to that part of the world before. But the hardest thing for me when I got there was the jet lag. The time difference was so difficult for me to handle. One of the activities we did there was we took some uh, children, some underprivileged children, to an amusement park at night. It was only about six or seven, I believe. But I could not stop falling asleep. And I did everything I could. I did push-ups on the ground. I, I, I did jumping jacks, you know, to try to stay awake. I ran in place. I slapped myself in the face to try to stay awake. I think I became one of the attractions in the amusement park because I was trying to, to stay awake, but nothing worked. Well, our group went to this restaurant uh, in the middle of the park, and we stopped to get a snack for everybody. I sat down at one of the tables in the restaurant. I put my head down, and I was out. I was out. The next thing I remember, I remember one of my team members coming up to me and saying, Hey, are you okay? And I thought I had been gone about five minutes. But apparently I found out later that the rest of the team had gone on roller coasters, had played the carnival games, had had a full-on meal. They left me out of it, right? All because I was completely out. I completely missed all of it. And guess what? I was the team leader. Um, there was all this stuff happening around me, right? The joy and the fun, the cries of the children, delightful. The roar of the roller coasters and, and all the lights and all the action and the fun. All this stuff happened around me and I was completely missing out. Have you ever been in a situation where there is a reality around you, but you're the only one, perhaps it feels like, that you're not lined up with it, you're not engaging in it? I think that's true for many of us now, because this Easter is kind of a strange Easter, it feels like. Other years, you might have had people over for dinner, you might have had plans for spring break. Uh, if you are familiar with church life, then you might have been at at the church building, you might have uh, looked forward to Easter eggs, Easter flowers, Easter songs, seeing friends and family at church, seeing people you haven't seen in a while, and worshiping God together. At least I was looking forward to that. But this Easter is different. Now the greater reality is Jesus rose from the dead. We do not live on the side of Good Friday before Easter rose, uh, before Jesus rose, but we live on the side after Good Friday, after Easter Sunday, where Jesus did rise from the dead. That's the reality. But despite being in that reality, we may find, you may find, I may find, that our thoughts and emotions are not lining up with that reality. Even the situations around us. Instead of healing, there's sickness. Instead of joy, there's sadness and anxiety. Instead of dinner with, with people you love and people who love you, you're at home. And instead of enjoying spring break, you're at home. Instead of us singing how Jesus is triumphant over all things, we're at home under quarantine, perhaps. It's a strange Easter. Or is it? Because the more I thought about it, the more that first Easter was pretty strange also. What if aligning ourselves with the reality of Jesus' resurrection was never automatic? But it was always a journey of faith. What if even Jesus' closest followers took some time to fully come to grips with the fact that Jesus is alive? What if the reality of Easter was always kind of strange until it became Easter in your own heart and life?
That's what I see in the scriptures. I read through the different resurrection accounts and my heart was drawn to this passage we read today because in this passage there are two followers of Jesus, Cleopas and his unnamed friend. And much like us, they've heard about Jesus' resurrection. They've heard about the women uh, going to the tomb, the men going to the tomb, and they've heard about these things, but their own heart and emotions, their own subjective experience is that they are still downcast, they're sad, they're disappointed. Their own selves do not line up with the reality that is around them, that they've heard. It's not just us. But Jesus is risen from the dead, so how do you get to the point where you line up, where your heart begins to line up with that reality, where Easter is not just a date on the calendar, but it's Easter in your own heart. How do you get there? Well, there are a few things I want to share with you this morning from this passage, and my hope is that they get you to that point today. The first thing I noticed in the passage was that in the midst of Cleopas and his friends' disappointments, Jesus was right there with them. This is what it tells us in Scripture. Cleopas and his friend, they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Now, please see that they were talking with each other. Cleopas and his friend, they're going over Palm Sunday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. Right? A lot happened in one week. Jesus was in a parade. Then Jesus was on the cross. Then Jesus was in a tomb. All <laughs> Within one week, a lot happened. So they're all talking about what happened. They're all disappointed. They're both disappointed. And in the middle of that, Jesus shows up right there. I love this on so many levels. Jesus doesn't wait for the two of them to get their act together, to believe, to get past their disappointments. No. He shows up to walk with them in the middle of their disappointments. And on top of that, Jesus doesn't just show up for the big shot disciples, Peter, James, and John. He shows up for Cleopas and his unnamed friend, small fish. How do I know they're small fish? Well, you've probably never heard of the name of Cleopas. Maybe not before today. Maybe if you've been in church a long time, maybe you have. But I don't know too many babies in our congregation named Cleopas, right? But please hear me. When you are not aligned with the reality of Jesus' resurrection in your own life, when you're feeling downcast, anxious, sad, disappointed, Jesus is not far away, tapping his foot, waiting for you to just get it. Jesus is right there with you, walking alongside you. Even though you may not recognize he's there, he's there. Brothers and sisters, there are many people, not just today during this pandemic, but every Easter, there are many people who wrestle with depression, doubt, disappointment, sadness, even death in their lives. And where is Jesus? Jesus is right there with them. If you feel Easter is different from you, if you feel like it's just a date on the calendar rather than a fire in your heart, then maybe what you need to hear today is Jesus is with you right where you are. Friends, Jesus is with you today. The second thing I noticed is that Jesus keeps asking Cleopas and his friends questions. This is really funny to me as I read through this. Jesus is walking along with them and he asks them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And he's got to know what they're talking about, right? But he still asks. And then get this, Cleopas says to Jesus, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Imagine Cleopas thinking back later after realizing it was Jesus all along. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I said that, right? It's like Cleopas said, not knowing it was Jesus, but it's like he said, have you been under a rock lately? And you know what Jesus could have said? He could have said, why yes, yes I have. But he didn't, and you know what he says instead? He asks, what things? What's going on? Why does Jesus keep asking if he already knows? Even better than they do what happened? I think Jesus keeps asking because that way, Cleopas and his friend get to express themselves to Jesus. And if you read along, as they express themselves to Jesus, they get to the root of what's going on in their own lives, in their own hearts. They say, we had hoped 
He was the one to redeem Israel. Listen, God wants us to express ourselves to Him. He welcomes it. He asks for it. He, he wants not just give me prayers and save me prayers, which we pray a lot of, which are fine, but I think God wants more here am I, God, prayers. This is my heart. This is how I feel. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm going through. An honest expression of your heart. And many times as we talk to God about what's in our hearts, we get to the root of what's going on in us. We discover things that we didn't even realize. We pray, not because God doesn't know, but because we don't know. I don't mean thinking, just thinking about what's in your heart. I mean talking to God about it. You ever thought you would say something and you rehearse it in your head and then it doesn't come out the way you expect it? You know, there's a difference between thinking and praying. Some people will talk to no one but God, but many people will talk to everyone else but God. And if that's you, maybe you're afraid to do so. Maybe you think, now how could God pay attention to me, he's so great. Or maybe you've been hurt in the past and you don't want to go there. But here is Jesus asking Cleopas and his friend, what's going on? When's the last time you expressed yourself to God? As you are, your heart to his. He can handle it. And maybe it's the one thing that's keeping you from experiencing Easter in your heart. I went on a personal retreat once while going through a very difficult time. I went to a retreat center by myself and I looked around. Uh, they assigned me to a cabin and I unpacked my bags, I put them down, and then I start to explore the cabin, right? I went to the bathroom, I, I, I looked around, I opened the cabinet, turned on the faucets, lifted the toilet seat, all that, and then I went to the kitchen, opened the drawers, looked at the plates, looked at the forks, and everything that was in the cabin. Uh, I wasn't eating anything, but I was just exploring the whole cabin. I just started going round and round within that tiny cabin. I was avoiding talking to God, which was the whole reason I was there. But finally, after looking at a plate one too many times, I sat down and I said three words. I said, God, I'm here. And the tears just started running. The sobs just started coming. And as I talked with God about my disappointments, about my struggles, about my weaknesses, you know, I got to one of the things that was really going on in me. I had felt like God abandoned me. But he had not. And I, by the end of the retreat, I got to the point where I knew he had not. I felt he had not. He was with me. He would help me to overcome everything I was enduring. Easter was in my heart, right, so to speak. But I would not have gotten there until I expressed the contents of my heart to him. And I heard from him through scripture and through the encouragements of others. Friends, Jesus is risen, and maybe what you need to hear today is that you can express yourself to Him. Everything that's going on, everything you're feeling about this pandemic, really just bringing your entire heart to God. And maybe that's what you need to do to begin to experience Easter in your heart. Well, the third thing I noticed was that Jesus, He does not come right out and say, Guys, it's me! That would have been something, right? If the scriptures said that, if, if Cleopas and his, and his buddy were talking about, we're so disappointed, we had hoped this, and imagine Jesus just said there, guys, look, it's me. But he doesn't do that. I started to wonder why. You know what he does instead? He says to them this. He says, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So instead of revealing himself to them right then and there, instead of giving them another personal subjective experience, like I didn't see Jesus risen before, but now I do. You know what Jesus does first? Jesus grounds them in scripture. 
Jesus grounds them in a truth greater than their personal experience, and Jesus helps them to see himself, Jesus, in all of the scriptures. That way, please hear me, instead of hanging their faith on their emotions and on their personal experiences, they learn to hang their faith on the truth of what God has said and how God has kept all his promises in Jesus Christ. This is so important. We all need something bigger than us to ground our feelings and personal experiences. Because sometimes you have good days and other times you have bad days. Sometimes you feel like, you might feel like you're worthless. Sometimes you might feel like a failure. Sometimes you might feel like the worst is going to come get you. Sometimes you feel like, you know what, I deserve more than anybody else. But Scripture gives us a better ground than our own thoughts and emotions. The Scriptures say things like this, in Christ, faith in Christ, you have redemption through His blood. God redeemed you through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not worthless. You are worth the blood of Jesus. Scriptures say you are God's work of art created in Christ Jesus to do good works. You might fail from time to time, but you're not a failure. You might not know what to do while you stay at home in this pandemic, but you know what? You are beloved, and God has a purpose for you. Don't worry about your life. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Matthew chapter 6. You may worry and be anxious from time to time. But Jesus says, you know what? Seek God first. Seek his kingdom first. Seek to be in right relationship with God and right relationship with others. And God's going to take care of everything you need. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right? You and your neighbor do not deserve more than each other. Both you and your neighbor are important to God. Both of you need toilet paper. But Jesus does not just anchor them in Scripture. He shows them how all of the Scripture talks about Him. You see, the events that so disappointed Cleopas and his friend, they were all things that came together so that God would keep all his promises to his people. God was not surprised. God was not disappointed by what happened. Was he saddened by it? Yes. But God redeemed it all through Jesus' suffering and resurrection. You see, Jesus grounded Cleopas and his friend in how God fulfilled the promises of Scripture so much so that later on they would say this. They said, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the Scriptures to us? So even before they realized this was Jesus with them, even before they had this personal encounter experience with the risen Jesus, their hearts were already burning. Right? Easter was already beginning in their hearts, and it started with the scriptures and how God kept all of his promises. Brothers and sisters, we have yet to see the end of this pandemic. But our faith is not grounded in this too shall pass, or life will be normal again. Our faith is grounded, our hope is is grounded in the goodness of God and God keeping all his promises and God redeeming everything that happens for his glory and for our good. Just like God redeemed all things through keeping his promises in Jesus Christ. So maybe for Easter to be in your heart today, what you need to hear is not this too shall pass, but that our hope is grounded in the promises and purposes of God. Finally, the last thing I noticed is that Cleopas and his friend, they do recognize Jesus when they sit and eat with them, with him. So Jesus does not leave them without a personal experience and encounter. When they get to where they're about, when they get to where they were going in Emmaus, uh, Jesus looks like he's going to go farther, but they invite him to stay. And when Jesus was at the table with them, we're told, 
He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. They finally recognized Jesus. And it happens when he takes the bread, gives thanks to God, and breaks the bread and gives it to them. There was something that happened there. We don't know really what it was. We're just told as it happened. We don't know if there's anything specific. So there's a couple of guesses I had. Maybe when Jesus gave thanks, he had a special way of doing it. And so, you know, they had been with him for so long. And so when he finally gave thanks uh, for the bread, they realized, you know what? Nobody else gives thanks to God like that. And so they realized it must have been Jesus. My dad has a way of ending every meal prayer uh, that I've never heard anybody else do. He says in Korean, and I'm, I'm going to give you the English translation. He says, whenever we eat or drink, we pray honoring the name of Jesus. It's related to a scripture passage, but I haven't heard anybody else say it quite like he has. And so even if you were wearing a face mask, I would know it's him. That's who, it's my dad, he prayed that prayer. So maybe it was something about the prayer, but maybe. Maybe when Jesus gave them the bread, his sleeves went up and they saw the nail marks in his hands. And they saw and then they realized all of the fulfillment of scripture was right before them that Jesus suffered, died, and rose again so that they could be forgiven and have a deep friendship with God. Point is this, brothers and sisters, what helps you to realize, to remember, to relive the reality that Jesus is risen? What reminds you, what helps you to relive His gracious love for you, His presence in your life, that you're His beloved child, that, that, that you're forgiven? What, what helps you, reminds you to love others like Jesus loves you? Could it be that Easter feels far from you because there is not much in your life that reminds you and helps you to be reliving the reality of Jesus' resurrection? What is in your life that speaks that reality to you over and over again? That helps you to relive it and remember it just like Cleopas and his friend saw that and relived that and experienced that as Jesus gave thanks. You know, I struggled so much with staying awake on that mission trip. And so I asked one of the team members whose day job it is uh, to travel internationally to the other side of the world. He's out half the year, I think. And I asked him, how do you do it? How do you deal with the jet lag? And you know what he told me? He told me, wherever I get to, when, whenever I get to, wherever I need to go, I make sure I stay outside in the sun as much as possible. I want to get into the covers. I want to draw the curtains in my hotel room, and I want to just sleep. But I get out there. And the sun keeps reminding him, it's daytime. It's daytime. It's time to be awake. And he says it helps him. His life, his body, his thoughts to get lined up with the reality that it's daytime. With the reality of his new time zone. What helps you to constantly remind you Jesus is alive? Would you pursue those things? Because I believe if you do so, the reality of Easter will be in your heart and it will not leave your life no matter what your personal circumstances may be. If you're not a Christian today, then maybe Easter has seemed far away from you in the past. And the way that Easter can be in your heart is for you to hear and receive the good news of Jesus. God loves you so much. He gave his son Jesus for you. Our sin keeps us from God. It separates us from God. It breaks friendship with God, just like it breaks friendship with other people. Doing good things don't make up for sin. Like, if someone said something nice about my mom after insulting your mom, that doesn't make up for it. So doing good things, no matter how much we think it does, doesn't make up for the sin. And we all sin. We all fall short. But Jesus 
died on the cross for our sins. He bore our punishment and our suffering, and then he rose from the dead. He overcame evil and injustice. He broke the hold of sin, and he put death to death. When you put your faith in Jesus, you are forgiven of your sins, every single one, and you have a new life, and that new life is living close with God forever and ever. Easter is in your heart. If you are a Christian, what do you do? What can you do that would regularly renew Easter in your heart? Maybe it's spending some quiet time meditating on the scriptures, reminding yourself of these truths. Maybe it's expressing yourself honestly to Him like I shared today. Maybe, maybe it's being in regular connection with other people who follow Jesus. Maybe it's talking about Jesus regularly with others because we talk about a lot of things and not Jesus. Maybe it's regularly taking communion, the body, the blood of Jesus. Maybe it's regularly being with the church, singing songs, being on this live stream every Sunday, Maybe it's regularly giving of yourself to serve, loving others, and that reminds you not how good you are, but how good God is. Whatever those things may be, would you regularly pursue those things? If your regular pursuit now is constantly binge watching what's on TV, after a few weeks of doing that, I wouldn't be surprised if Jesus' resurrection is the farthest thing from your mind. I mean, I'm first to say the more TV I watch, the less, the less I'm thinking about that. But would you regularly pursue the things that remind you Jesus lives? Imagine if we were all to do that. I tell you, when I hear and I see others worshiping God virtually in the midst of a pandemic, oh, I feel like Jesus rose from the dead. When I hear and see people praying for each other, meeting on Zoom virtually and caring for each other, oh, I feel, you know what? Jesus rose from the dead. When I hear people sharing good news, encouraging one another, inviting others to live stream or telling, hey, be hopeful, be encouraged, I feel like, wow, Jesus is risen from the dead. When I hear and see other people giving of themselves, sharing food, sharing toilet paper, making face masks, and on and on, it reminds me, Jesus rose from the dead. And church... You do this in so many ways, and I'm so proud of you. I see the life of the risen Jesus just going through our community, our congregation, and it's such an awesome thing to see. The gospel of Jesus lived out amongst us reminds us of Jesus, and it helps me to line up with the Easter around me and experience Easter in my heart. So I hope that's the case for you. If you're not a Christian, I invite you to put your faith in Jesus. If you are, would you remind yourself of the gospel and be the church living it out. And may Easter be in your heart today and every day as you live out that love of Jesus in your life. Amen. Amen. Now we go to a time of offering, and I invite you to give. You can mail in your offering. You can give on our website through PayPal or Tithely. Uh, but we also take this time to offer our prayers to God. And some of you have shared some prayer requests with me, and so I'm going to uh, share some of those prayer requests with you all, and I would invite you all to pray. Um, Brian uh, wanted to give a shout out to people who've covered him in prayer. He's recovering. He just wanted to say thank you. So thank you, church, for praying. Uh, Chelsea uh, has a bowel obstruction uh, in her baby, and so let's pray for it to clear. The baby's due in May. Uh, let's pray for her health and the baby's health. Uh, let's pray for Alyssa. She also needs health and healing. Let's pray for uh, Bill and Nancy Fink's son, Craig Archer, who had a uh, stroke last Friday. His left side is mostly paralyzed, so let's pray for him. Um, let's pray for Stephen, who has COVID-19. Uh, let's pray for Janet's daughter, Wendy. Uh, she's been out of work, and she's been sick for over a month. Let's pray for wisdom for doctors and insight for doctors and for healing. Uh, let's pray for uh, Wendy Harkins. This is a different Wendy. Wendy Harkins' brother, Ron Zimmerman, he had two surgeries last week. Please pray for full recovery. Let's pray for all the people that uh, have COVID-19 or have lost someone to COVID-19. 
and uh, church, would you lift up prayers for uh, Carol Wesson's family? She passed this past Monday. So would you lift up prayers for God's peace and comfort for their family? Um, it's not an easy time right now for those who have lost somebody uh, because of the restrictions on funerals and because uh, public gatherings are restricted. Um, so let's pray uh, for uh, Carol's family and let's pray for all others who have lost people and let's pray most of all that even in the middle of their loss they remember Jesus rose from the dead and one day we will we will rise we will have new life we will have eternal life and all those with faith in Jesus will will be together and gather together in that everlasting life with with Jesus Christ so now let's pray for all of these things. Let's take a moment. God, we lift up all of these prayer requests to you. Carol's family, we pray for comfort and peace. Oh God, be the presence and the company that their whole family needs in this time. Remind them that they are not alone and that you are with them. I pray, God, for those with COVID-19 wrestling those who have lost friends and family members to COVID-19. Those with COVID-19 in Del Ran. God, would you bring healing? God, as they turn to you, would you bring powerful healing to their lives and help them to recover? God, we pray for Stephen who has COVID-19. I pray that he recovers and you protect his family. God, we lift up Ron Zimmerman, we pray for full recovery for him. God, we pray for Wendy, Janet's daughter. We pray for full recovery for her. Whatever is going on in her, that the doctors uh, would be able to have insight to figure that out, and you would bring treatment and healing for her. God, we pray for Craig. His left side's mostly paralyzed. We pray, God, that you would bring life back to his body. We pray for Alyssa for health and for healing and for wholeness. We pray for that bowel obstruction in Chelsea's baby. May it be gone in the name of Jesus. We pray for it to clear. We pray for healthy baby in May. Healthy mom. We pray for dad to be filled with joy and serving and loving his family. We pray thanking you for the community of prayer that you've given to us. We pray, oh God, that we believe you can redeem everything we are going through into good that far surpasses all that we are enduring. Give us faith in your word. Give us faith in your promises, in your purposes, and make Easter be alive in our hearts as we pray this prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's continue to pray for these different things. And as we close out our uh, online service today, we've got a special treat. Uh, many of you might recognize this hymn, Up From the Grave, He Arose. And I want to invite you uh, to sing this hymn with our praise team. Now, the praise team has worked to put together a virtual choir, and it's been such uh, a learning curve, but it's been such a blessing to see us all coming together, the praise team coming together to do this. So. Uh, I invite you to enjoy uh, this video clip that the praise team put together, uh, but not just enjoy watching it. I invite you to sing along with it, remembering that Jesus up 
from the grave. He arose. He arose. Okay? Let's sing together. team awesome 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 thank you all for singing along it's a wonderful and beautiful truth Jesus he arose praise God wherever you are would you put your hands up like this it's a posture of giving and a posture of receiving um, so let's give our lives and our hearts all that we are to God as we receive his blessing in this benediction gracious and loving God Today, you showed your power. Death cannot hold you down. Sin cannot hold you down. Evil cannot hold you down. Jesus, you triumphed over all of these things. You rose from the dead and you live forever and ever. God you live forever and ever, but not distant from us. In the presence of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, you are with each and every one of us as we worship from home. Jesus, you invite us to say everything that's in our hearts to you, then to hear from the promises of Scripture, the purposes you have laid out, that we might have hope and confidence for the future, not in ourselves, not in this too shall pass, but confidence and faith grounded upon you, your goodness, and how you redeem all things for the sake of your glory and for our good. Bless us today, Lord God, that we might be filled with your Holy Spirit, that it might be Easter in our hearts, so that we might share that joy and peace with others, that we might share the name of Jesus who brings that peace. 
Bless us, O God, to be a blessing this week and every week. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Well, church, I hope you have a beautiful day today. I hope that uh, this week is full of joy and this week is full of hope for you. Let's continue to keep one another in prayer. Let's keep pursuing the things that remind us of hope in Jesus. Um, I invite you, we're going we're gonna to close and you're free to leave, but... Uh, you know, I know many of you like to sing. I love to sing, so I'm going to sing Because He Lives. And you don't need to stick around for that. Uh, have a wonderful day, but I love singing Because He Lives, and I, I love that song. You don't know how much I love that song, uh, but it's Easter today, and uh, we're going to sing it together. So if you'd like, stick around. If not, I hope you have a wonderful and beautiful week.